So um, Array uh, 797 actually is um, is a uh, is a P38 inhibitor. It's a it's a highly specific and uh, uh, somewhat differentiated uh, P38 inhibitor that is being studied in a rare form of dilated cardiomyopathy, which is called uh, lamin A related dilated cardiomyopathy. Now, lamin A related dilated cardiomyopathy is um, among uh, the um, familial cardio uh, cardiomyopathies and among cardiomyopathies in general. Um, one of the the uh, the diseases that have the worst prognosis with about 70% of patients uh, having significant uh, cardiac uh, morbidity or mortality or requiring uh, a transplant by the age of uh, 45. Um, what we're presenting here today are results from our phase two study, uh, well actually not today, tomorrow, uh, results from our phase two study um, where uh, we've uh, study the drug in approximately in 12 patients uh, with this rare form of uh, cardiomyopathy and have shown that uh, we see uh, significant improvements in um, six minute walk test, which is a measure of functional capacity uh, where patients are able to walk uh, 69 meters uh, further at 12 weeks. Um, and these changes in six minute walk are also paralleled by changes um, in uh, N-terminal pro-BMP, which is a biomarker of heart failure, as well as other uh, markers of cardiac function, including uh, quality of life measurements using the KCCQ questionnaire. Yeah, so the hypothesis was based on um, preclinical work that showed that the, the, the drug worked um, well in, in preclinical models of the disease in, in mouse models as well as in in vitro studies using uh, cardiomyocytes with the, uh, the genetic mutation. And so the, the, uh, it's always surprising when you see the, you know, the, the, the basic science uh, come to fruition in man. Um, so you know, to that, ex that, that extent it was surprising, but uh, certainly we're, we're very pleased to see that um, we're seeing these functional improvements uh, in patients with the disease and um, that you know, this was predicted from the animal models. In terms of my role, I'm the chief medical officer for the company, so I coordinate um, research and, and development for, uh, for the company. Um, and uh, you know, we, we uh, monitor the trials and design the studies and so forth and, and interact with the health agencies. Yeah, so this is a rare form of cardiomyopathy, and um, it is a, a genetic disorder, and it, it's familial. So you have uh, dilated cardiomyopathies, which are a form of heart failure. Um, it's a form of heart failure where the heart actually gets big. The muscle kind of becomes loose and flabby, and the, and the, the heart um, dilates. And that's why it's called dilated cardiomyopathy. It doesn't function properly. Um, in, in this process, you also, uh, patients also develop um, arrhythmias uh, associated with, and, and they can also have um, se severe arrhythmias that lead to sudden death. So lamin A-related dilated cardiomyopathy is, is one of the worst uh, forms of dilated cardiomyopathy. So if you want to compare and contrast, uh, as I said before, about 70% of the patients will have had a, a significant cardiac event or will have died or will have required transplant by the time they, they reach the age of 45. If you, if you look at dilated cardiomyopathy that's not lamin A related, the number there is, is not 70%, it's actually almost reversed. It's, it's only about 25% of patients will, will have that severity by the age of 45. So this is a really severe form of dilated cardiomyopathy. It's familial, but it's also fairly rare and it probably represents somewhere between five and 7% of uh, the idiopathic, in other words, the, the dilated cardiomyopathies where there's no other uh, clear cause. So there's, there's no clear demographic, but the prevalence is, as I said, that we, we think, with it, or estimate that there's about six to 8,000 patients in the United States, for example, with this disease. But the problem is, is because there isn't a specific therapy for, for this form of disease, it's often not tested for. So the number of patients with actual identified lamin A mutations is, um, is much lower. Um, and so that, you know, there is a push to having patients with uh, these cardiomyopathies, especially if, they, you know, if the family history is correct and it's at a young age, to actually get the genetic testing, but it's not universally applied at this point.
Right, so I think that there are efforts, and the, you know, there's a big debate in the in the cardiovascular community with regard to uh, this type of testing. There certainly is a strong push now to uh, test not just not just for therapeutic reasons, but also just so that from a um, a counseling point of view, um, genetic counseling point of view, in terms of families, the, uh, in terms of um, transmitting it to children, and also in terms of um, informing other family members who may be at risk for uh, arrhythmias or sudden death. So th there's a lot of reasons to test. And now, you know, if 797 uh, ultimately emerges as a, as a potential therapy, a specific therapy for this disease, that'll be just one more reason to test because now you'll actually have a very specific intervention for these patients. And so the, the, the reason for testing or the, 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 the threshold for testing will, will become much lower. Uh, what do I plan on doing? <laughs> well, I plan on going back to work and and uh, continuing to develop this drug. So, uh, as you might imagine, um, you know, based on these results, we've started to have discussions with regulators with regards to what the next step might be, what the next study might be to actually um, get the drug ultimately on the market into patients if uh, we see the same kinds of results um, in a phase three study.